Today is a very big day, my friends, because we've got huge elections taking place in Colorado and New York. There's a lot of races to watch. And one that I've been talking about a lot is Jamal Bowman's race in the 16th Congressional District of New York. I will be doing a video about that once we get some results, so be on the lookout for that. But for right now, I just want to talk about the race in Colorado's 4th Congressional District, specifically the GOP primary involving Lauren Boebert. Because we are soon going to find out if her switch from District 3 to 4 is going to either pay off or blow up in her face. Now, I'm hoping for the latter, but, you know, we don't necessarily know how it's going to turn out, although polls do show her ahead by quite a bit. She's also the biggest fundraiser, so take that as you will. But having said that, though, one of her potential Democratic opponents, John Padora, released an ad trolling her over, you guessed it, the Beetlejuice incident. And uh, here's that ad. I'm John Padora. I'm sitting in the very same seat that Lauren Boebert got kicked out of the same way she got kicked out of Colorado's third congressional district. Now she's picked up her bags and fled to Eastern Colorado to run in the fourth congressional district. That's a race I've been running since May of 2023. Boebert's an opportunistic carpetbagger and we deserve real leadership here in Colorado's fourth. Please, if you can, chip in $5, $10 today to make sure that we have the resources we need to win this race. Okay, not bad. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I think that you could have fit more attacks on her and more policy substance in there. But regardless, I think that these kinds of ads, specifically against Bobert, they're brilliant. Not just because, you know, that was a humiliating moment for her, of course. That's that's pretty obvious. But it's also important because it speaks to Bobo's hypocrisy. She has always portrayed herself as this family value, self-proclaimed Christian nationalist Republican who oftentimes accused LGBTQ plus people of being groomers and being inappropriate in public, but yet there she was in that seat doing the very thing that she was purportedly against. So you have to capitalize on that because it speaks to who she is as a person. And on top of that, it's brilliant strategically because Republicans in that district have expressed disgust with that action. And we've talked about the articles where they spoke with Republicans and they're like, yeah, you know, I agree with her on the policy, but I just think that members of Congress should be more respectable. And that's not too surprising for the fact that this is Ken Buck's old district. We're talking about a lot of traditional normie Republicans who aren't as sycophantic with regard to Donald Trump, although to be fair, there are a lot in that district. But, you know, it has been kind of a sticking point for a lot of people. So look, if I were running against her, you bet your ass I'd be capitalizing on that incident. I'd be running ads about policy, but also nonstop running ads against her, calling her Beetlejuice Bobo or something like that, because you just can't not miss that opportunity to call her out for that hypocrisy. So I am encouraged to see John Padora use that line of attack against her, because that's something that is smart, and it also worked for him, clearly, because he went viral. There were articles written about that ad, which is everything that a candidate could hope for. The problem, at least with regard to John, is that I think it's a little bit too late because it doesn't actually look like he is going to be the Democrat taking on Lauren Boebert if she wins her primary, because internal polling from his opponent, Ike McCorkle, shows that John is actually losing to both McCorkle and Trisha Calveras, although, to be fair, with 41% of voters unsure. So, you know, it could still go either way, but it doesn't necessarily look good for John. But the same poll also shows McCorkle beating Boebert by 14 points in the general. Now, to be fair to John, this strategy of attacking Bobo to increase your own name recognition, I think that's exactly what you have to do. It makes sense. Uh, but it's hard to imagine it'll actually pay off for him this late in the game. But to be frank, I really don't care which Democrat takes on Bobo in November because I've looked at the platforms of all of these Democrats and they all suck, to be honest. None of them support Medicare for All. McCorkle doesn't even have a healthcare section on his issues page. So they're all very standard, run of the mill, milk toast, corporate Democrats. But if one of them is able to beat Bobo, then hell, more power to him, right? But it does seem like McCorkle is the one who's going to take on Bobo. And, you know, if he does end up winning, he needs to emulate Pedora's strategy, do an ad just like that. Hell, copy him. Do exactly what he did, because believe it or not, this really is a sticking point for Republican normies. And this issue hasn't gone away, and I don't think it's going to go away for Bobo anytime soon. And I say this because, as Yahoo News reports, Bobert has been plagued with Beetlejuice references throughout her campaign, 
in the 4th District. During a debate in May, moderator Kyle Clark brought up the incident and bluntly asked, did you apologize for the behavior that went on with you and your date or the vaping? Or did you apologize for lying to voters about what you did that night and the disrespect that you showed to service workers that night? What specifically were you apologizing for? Earlier that month, when Boebert visited Washington University as students protested Israel's war in Gaza, demonstrators mocked her by chanting Beetlejuice. Boebert was also taunted by a fellow Republican in January when Representative Lisa McLean told guests at the Washington Press Club Foundation's annual congressional dinner, quote, I know it's date night for some of you, but no inappropriate touching. That includes you, Lauren Boebert. No vaping either. Now, on top of that, you have comedian Jason Selvig of The Good Liars who asked her for an autograph of his copy of Beetlejuice the musical outside of a courthouse during Trump's trial. So needless to say, you know, she's never going to live that down, nor should she, you know, but I do want to talk a little bit more about the Beetlejuice chant by that crowd, because I feel like the article really didn't do it justice. And I didn't originally talk about that when it happened, uh, but it was it was really magical. So to kind of set this up for you, she visited a student encampment. And the first thing she tries to do at George Washington University is tear down a, pl a Palestinian flag. Doesn't go very well for her. But then as she's leaving, that's when the crowd chants Beetlejuice. But it's not like the crowd is just like chanting Beetlejuice because you hear boos from time to time and heckling. They were right in her fucking face, basically, like 20 feet or so away from her chanting this very loudly. So she absolutely heard it. But seeing it really shows you how embarrassing this was for her. So let's watch that. Excuse me. That's up. Love that. So she got owned by a Palestinian flag, then the crowd. And that just honestly warms my heart so much. Seeing videos like that makes me feel not necessarily hopium. I guess it just gives me momentary satisfaction, which, you know, I'll take it. It's better than not being satisfied momentarily. Now, this goes without saying, but the Beetlejuice incident obviously isn't substantive or policy related. But I think that sometimes it's OK to just give bad people a taste of their own medicine. I think that's that's warranted, especially when it comes to somebody like Lauren Boebert who's a monster. This is somebody who would violate the own standards of the Christian nationalist nation that she wants to impose on all of us. So, of course, I think it's worthwhile to point out the hypocrisy that she's exhibiting. Now, whenever you see somebody like this, be it an anti-abortion Republican who pays for the abortion of his mistress or an anti-gay politician, you know, getting caught liking porn or being with a gay prostitute or sex worker, or, you know, you find somebody who is a member of Congress who gets caught jerking off their date during a Beetlejuice play, I think that it's incumbent on all of us to call out that hypocrisy, make it so that's what they become known for, because it exposes how this entire movement, their worldview is just a sham, right? And they're just saying what they think Republican voters want to hear because they want to get elected. That's pretty evident. Now, with all of that being said, even though there's anecdotal evidence that the Beetlejuice thing is hurting her, at least with some Republican voters, it doesn't seem like it's enough to tip the scales against her. And again, I say this because she is both leading when it comes to polls against her GOP primary opponents and raising more money than them. So, look, at this point, I'd be surprised if she didn't pull off a victory, but at least based on that one poll from McCorkle, there is a chance that the district is in play in general. So we'll just have to wait and see. You know, either way, let me just leave by saying this. Everyone in District 4, if you're a Republican, you have the chance to do the funniest fucking thing ever. So why not give this to us? Why not grant us a small win, right? I'm not going to get my hopes up, but, you know, you could do this and it would be really awesome. But if she does win, I don't expect the Beetlejuice story to go away anytime soon. Uh, it's going to haunt her. You know, if she wins, every subsequent Republican and Democratic opponent she faces is going to bring this up again and again and again. And at least that thought 
does give me satisfaction even if she she wins all right but you know we'll have to wait and see what happens now again expect a video uh from me about the outcome of jamal bowman's race because uh that is very important i don't know if that's coming later tonight late tonight or tomorrow morning we'll see but by far that is the most consequential primary taking place in this entire cycle so of course i'm not going to miss that so stay tuned for that Vagina. <laughs> 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 <laughs>